A couple of miles away, at the perfectly manicured Airbus headquarters, John Leahy is conducting his guided tour for Qantas. They have arrived at the Airbus showroom, where they'll see a new, far more realistic interior. Okay, now I think we've got just about everybody. Okay, now Rod. Uh, Though it's all smiles, this is deadly serious. If they don't like it, there'll be trouble ahead. It's almost like a, you know, a young family introducing their new baby to the relatives. You want everybody to be impressed. You want everybody to say it's beautiful. And deep down inside, you're really waiting to see what they truly do say. The head of the airline is Jeff Dixon, a tough talking, no nonsense businessman. To begin with, he doesn't seem too impressed. John presses on with the walkabout, and then, almost in a whisper, Jeff reveals his true feelings. But just to give an idea of space uh, that you've got, it's true. And that's the way the, the liners are Oh, it's fa fabulous. Uh, better than we expected when we ordered, but uh, we did expect a lot, so yeah, right up to expectations. Although the mock-up gets a good reception, Airbus still have to prove they can deliver the airliners on time. This is the same size. With billions already spent on a plane that is yet to fly, there's a lot at stake. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say they bet the shop on it, but they've certainly bet a lot on it. Uh, but then, by the same token, we're not betting the shop on buying it, but we're making a huge commitment to an aircraft that hasn't flown. Now, we know and very confident that it will fly, and it will fly very, very well. But still, we're all making um, very, very big commitments and taking quite a few chances in a development like this. If the planes are late, Qantas could demand significant compensation. There's not a moment to waste. By mid-June 2004, major structural assembly of the biggest airliner in history is well underway. This is the horizontal tailplane. With a span of 32 metres, it's as big as the wings of a small airliner. Made of carbon fibre in south and central Spain, it's easily the biggest tailplane ever made. The tail fin is another carbon fibre monster. 14 metres high, this component is made near Hamburg in Germany. When installed, it will stand as high as an eight-storey building. Some airports will have to buy new cranes to service it. Carefully, it's craned into place and attached with 24 titanium bolts. As the last piece is attached, Charles Champion comes to check on the plane and Gilles Cormier has bad news for the boss. The last piece of fuselage, the Spanish-built tail cone, is out of line. Six millimetres might not seem very much, but the problem will take three days to sort out, time they really don't have. I think it's, uh, it's, one, of, it's one of those phases when, uh, where the success of the project is at reach, but uh, you have many elements uh, to tackle in parallel in order to make it happen. So uh, you're under control, but uh, you've got to work uh, fast and uh, several parallel subjects uh, in order to be able uh, to deliver the project at the end. The next stage is to install the landing gear. These substantial parts have to be extremely strong. Not only is the A380 the heaviest passenger plane ever built, 
its landing gear must be able to cope with extreme situations. Many landing gear engineers have a copy of this low resolution video clip as a reminder of the conditions that can occur. Heading for the now disused Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong is a Boeing 747. Approaching in a crosswind, the left hand gear is about to take the full weight of the plane as it hits the tarmac. Amazingly, this was a successful landing and the A380 will need gear that's stronger still. The 747's gear is made by Goodrich, who are also supplying the main gear for the A380. Here, near Toronto in Canada, production is well underway and testing is just about to begin. When we have a new landing gear program, we have a lot of tests that we need to do. Strength, performance, dynamics, um, durability. This one is a performance test. This is one of the first tests we do. It's one of the more important tests. It's called a drop test. What it is, is a simulation of landing. Um, so when an aircraft lands, uh, an A380 lands, 560 tons of aircraft moving slowly towards the ground, as well as 200 miles an hour down the runway. When the aircraft hits the ground, something has got to absorb that energy. So if you jump off a chair and you land, your knees have to bend and give a little bit. Even just with the weight of a person, you're going to damage yourself if nothing gives. So that giving of your knees, your legs are absorbing energy. That's what the landing gear has to do, but it has to do it for instead of 180 pounds, it's got to do it for 560 tons. Suspended inside this huge tower, the landing gear is raised in preparation for the drop. The rig is static, so to simulate the approaching ground speed, smaller wheels driven by powerful electric motors spin the big 55-inch tyres in the reverse direction. When a switch is flicked in the control room, a hook at the top of the tower will release, allowing the gear to fall. It must absorb the same energy as a 100 mile an hour car crash without being damaged. It's a critical phase in the whole program. This could be a make or break test. If, if the performance of the landing gear isn't what we predicted it to be, it could impact the schedule for the first flight. So it's essential that the gear performs to how we predicted it. And from these tests, we'll be able to tell whether it does. Although it's huge, the size of the A380 means that this 6.5 ton component is just one part of the plane's undercarriage. In total, there will be two six-wheel units under the body, plus two four-wheel units under the wings, and a two-wheeled set in the nose. So what you're about to see is only a fraction of the energy involved when the vast airliner touches down. Okay, I'm going to drop now. The test goes well. Early data shows that although there was an unwanted shudder as the wheels came to a halt, the landing gear shrugged off the huge impact with ease. <laughs> 